What's up, guys? My name is Mouton. I get to be the lead pastor of Relevant Church, and I'm so glad that you decided to tune in to one of our message replays. I believe that God has a word for you. Hey, listen, if you want to continue to support Relevant Church to be able to produce content that teaches the gospel and leads people to hope, go ahead and give a gift of any amount to giving.thisisrelevant.cc. You can sign up for recurring giving or give a one-time gift, but I want to let you know, every gift matters and allows us to take the gospel beyond our community, region, and world. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you are blessed by this message. Peace. So I want you to raise your hand if you trust God. Ooh, okay. I like it. I like it. Everybody got their hands up. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. So PM and PC, Pastor Christine and Pastor Muta, they invited me up here to talk about generosity. And last week, if you remember, if you were here, Pastor Muta, he was like, come back next week. Yeah, we're talking about money, but it's more than money. And I'll get more into that in my message. But for those that came back, you are brave. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> yes, give your hand. And so when they invited me to come up here and talk about generosity, I was like, are you sure? Are you sure that you want me out of all the people that are here in this church for me to come up and talk about generosity? And I say that because word around, not really on the street, but around relevant church, you know, is that I can be a little mean. I can be a little mean. I can be a little more, let's say, blunt more than most people. But I have to be because as the executive pastor, I oversee all of the operations. So I'm looking at things logistically. We all have these visions. We have these dreams. But I'm like, do we have the resources? And so sometimes I see things in black and white. And so I, when I say yes, that has to mean yes. When I say no, that has to mean no. And everyone has to know why I am saying that. And so, since they have given me permission to be honest, to be blunt, guess what? That's what I'm going to do today. The truth is that the majority of you guys that raised your hand and said, yes, I trust God. You're liars. You're liars. You don't trust God. Well, for the most part, for the most part. And if I'm being completely honest up here, neither do I. Neither do I. When I say we don't trust God, I don't simply mean about money. I mean, do we trust God with everything? Somebody say, do we trust God with everything, right? Do we trust God with our relationships? Some of us, we, we, love, we love taking breaks. We're like, oh, yeah, today we're together? Mm, no, nah, I don't like them anymore. No, I'm going on a break. We're on a break now. And God's like, no, you don't need to be on a break. You need to break up. You guys don't need to be together. Like, you need to end the relationship, but yet and still you're there, yet and still you're staying. Are you trusting God in the relationships that he puts in front of you? What about your job? Some of you guys, you're like, mm, the man, this job. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this job. I don't know what the, my boss is talking about, but God's like, submit to them because the, we have placed him in authority over you. We're going to submit to him. What about in a crisis? When everything is breaking, are you trusting God? When it seems like everything, everyone that you come in contact with is breaking, you feel like you're underwater because it's one thing after another, after another. Are you trusting God? What about when you're grieving? What about when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're down and out? When you've lost that loved one, are you trusting God? Are you trusting him? Are you believing that, yes, I'm going to see them again? What about in your prayers? We all like to pray around. At least I like to pray around here. But are you trusting God to still come through? Are you trusting him to still come through, even though you've been praying for weeks, for months, for years about something, and God still hasn't given it to you? Are you still going to trust him? He says, ask, he says, ask, but I'm not seeing it. But are you trusting him in the waiting? What about your future? Mm, this is one for me. When I wrote that, I said, ooh, okay, God, I see what you're doing. Because I don't like to talk about the unknown. I don't like the future because it's, it's not familiar. It's not familiar to me. Because what if I fail? What if I fail? 
I remember when I was in my regroup, guys. Shout out to people who are in the regroup. Woo! When I was in my very first regroup here at Relevant, I was coming to the end of my contract with my, I call it a big girl job, because I had to fill out an application, I had to do the interview, I had to send in a reel, and then when I got my check, that was some big girl salary money right there. I said, ooh, I have some money, this is nice, this is nice. So at this time, I'm coming to the end of my contract with the place that I was working, and I was like, God, what am I supposed to be doing? I don't know if I should be staying here or staying here or going away, like, because I had fallen in love. I had fallen in love with God all over again, and it was beautiful. I had met people here at Relevant, and it was beautiful. I had never experienced relationships with people like this before, and I didn't want to leave it, but at the same time, was God calling me to something else? I don't know. I'm getting offers all over the country in New Mexico, in Ohio, in Dallas, all over the place. God, what am I supposed to do? And it was so bad in my regroup. I was like crying. When I say crying, I mean crying. How many of you guys know Viola Davis? When she starts getting that, you know, the snotty nose, crying, that, that was me. I was like, God, why? What am I supposed to do? I just don't know. I just don't know. That was me. That was me. And I was just so afraid of uncertainty. I wasn't trusting God at all. I was trying to do it all, everything. Make that decision in my own strength. How best would I be taken care of? But I didn't trust God because I didn't think that he was gonna take care of me. God's promise to us is that he knows the plans that he has for us. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the plans that he has for us, for the plans that he has for us are not for evil. They're to give you future and a hope, a future and a hope. So it didn't matter if I stayed, it didn't matter if I went, God was still going to have me. He was still going to bless me. I just had to trust him. I had to trust him. We don't trust God because if we were to actually trust him, we would be giving up control, surrendering to his plans, placing our faith in an unseen, omnipotent God whose ways may not be aligned with our desires or understanding because his ways and his thoughts are bigger than ours. And so that brings me to the text that Pastor Muta brought up last week, which is Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. And you guys can go ahead and turn to that and look up to the screen while I take a sip of water up here. And so it says, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers one. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and the one who waters will himself be watered. I really enjoy the way the New International Version puts it. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And so that brings me to my first lesson here is generous people prosper. Come on, say that with me. Generous people prosper. So what is a generous person? A person that goes over and beyond to give something. It's a sacrifice to the point of stretching. Generous people, they don't complain. They don't grumble. They, they don't whine. They give because they want to. No, I, I keep saying want to, but I mean they give because they get to. I know someone in our neighborhood who no matter what time of day it was, it didn't matter what day of the week it was, we could go to their house whenever we needed anything. She could be on the couch watching her soap operas, probably watching the Dallas game. I don't know what she's doing. But if you knocked on her door, she was like, how can I help you? What do you need? Do you need food? Do you need clothes? I remember she had closets full of clothes just to give people. And what I loved most about this is the fact that she would lean in and say, how are you? How are you? 
That meant so much to me because not only is she giving up the material things that she has, but she's sacrificing herself. She's sacrificing her time. And that's what generosity is. Generosity is sacrificial. Come on, say that one more time with me. Generous people prosper. Okay, I had to make sure y'all were, were still up. Y'all were still up. Prosper is defined as the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economic well-being. Generous people, they have an abundance. They're well off. They are well off. Let's just take, for example, it's just some material things, right? So I did a little Google search because I was like, you know what? I wonder what it would look like for the most generous celebrities celebrities who are those people that's what i looked up and so i came across oprah which makes sense because you know she's schools in africa she's building up schools and she's like you get a car you get a car you get a of course yes she's generous she's very generous beyonce i was like okay queen b she's up here being generous i like it i like it rihanna and i know i just named three black women that that has nothing to do with anything but we also have bill gates we have bono we have keanu reeves and i just wanted to, i was like what do all of these people have in common? Exactly, money. Their net worth is a billion dollars or close to it. But I realized, God, it was like, but they are not billionaires so that they can give more. They give more, so that's why they're billionaires. They're well off, they're thriving because they give. But it's not just like I said about the material things. It's not about the material things. Prosperity is also in all aspects of life. I was looking up what is uh, the Hebrew word for prosperity, and it says improving the quality of or the value of. It means, dashain is the word, and it means to anoint. I was like, ooh, anoint. What does it mean to anoint? It means blessed. It means a Holy Spirit covering. A lot of the times back in the day, day when they would have a new king or a new priest, they would anoint them. They wanted to make sure that they were blessed. They wanted to make sure that they had the Holy Spirit covering. And so when the text says generous people will prosper, what should you expect? An anointing. You should expect an anointing. So that means that your relationships will be anointed. Your physical being will be anointed. Your emotional well-being will be anointed. Your mental health will be anointed. Generosity brings anointing that brings prosperity to every aspect of your life. So the question is, who would like to experience the prosperity of your life? The anointing of your life. Well, guess what? Generosity does that. Are you guys tracking with me? Are you feeling me? That brings me to my second point. Generosity has a guaranteed return. When we look at the second part of verse 25, it says, and one who waters will himself be watered. What, why do we, um, why do we water something? Why is it that we water? Exactly. Some of them, they were in the first service. That's how they know that answer. <laughs> so, yes, we water something so that we can to grow it. You're expecting a change to happen. You're, you're watering something to be stronger. You want it to thrive. Think about a farmer. Think about a farmer who's planting a seed. So they go out. They're like, okay, I'm going to go plant this seed. They don't just walk away and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that, that, those crops are gonna grow all on its own. It's gonna be great. No, they water it, they water it. But guess what, they don't just water it one time. They're not just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna water this one time and it's gonna be a-okay. No, they have to keep watering it. That's like generosity. It's not a one-time act, but a commitment to a lifestyle. To water, it means to fulfill a thirst. It means to fulfill a need. It means to help. But don't expect a return if you're not going to give up anything. Pastor Christine Chu is up here saying, give it, give it, give it. You have to give it up. If you don't give it up, you can't expect your blessing to come through. You can't expect a healing to come through. Why? Because you're still holding on to it. You're still worrying about it. So don't expect a return if you're not willing to give up anything. 
Other translations, they use the word refreshed. And I was like, okay, what is that? Refresh is to enhance. It means to bring a fresh wind, to fill something up like water. How many of you guys get so annoyed with technology sometimes? Oh my goodness. I do not enjoy it when I'm really trying to go hurry up and look up something and the page doesn't work. I'm like, come on internet, work with me, work with me. But many times when we hit the refresh button, I feel like this is a, a lot like refreshing your screen. When you hit the refresh button, the page that is broken goes away. And a fresh, functional new page is produced. Some of y'all didn't catch that, but you'll, you'll catch it when you get home, I'm sure. Refresh is to start over to be better. And scripture says when we refresh others, we will be refreshed. So if you're not refreshing, you will not be refreshed. When we refresh, we will be refreshed. When we help, we will find help. When we develop, we will be developed. Jeremiah 29, 7 says, But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, for, it's your, it's in, it, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. When you are generous, generosity will be returned back to you. When you water, you will get it back in the overflow in the overflow. But the problem is, with most of, most of us, is we don't trust God. We simply just don't trust him. And so I want to ask you, are you willing to trust God? Are you willing to trust God? in your relationships, at your jobs, when you're praying, when you're going through a crisis, when hell just seems to be breaking loose, are you trusting God? Are you trusting him with your finances? When we are not living with generosity in our finances, it's more than simply the fear of losing. It says that we don't believe God is capable of staying true to his word. So I'm going to ask you again. Are you willing to trust God? God wants more for you. He wants more for you. But you have to be willing to trust him first. God wants, you, wants to give you more joy. He wants to give you more resources. But you have to trust him. You have to let go, let go of a portion of what you have. Be generous and you will prosper. This is not a prosperity message, guys. It's a kingdom principle. So, do you want to prosper? Do you want to be refreshed? You have to trust God. And there are three ways that you can begin to trust him. You can do that by having your giving be recurring. You can sign up for recurring giving. With recurring giving, it just comes right out of your account. You don't even have to think about it. And it's beautiful because we automate so many things like Jessica was saying earlier. We automate our Netflix, our subscriptions, our Starbucks. Man, I love me some coffee, man. But we do that for everything else but the one important thing that is important to God. And that's what he's given to us. There's a video I want to show you guys. Some of you guys may have seen it last week. And, um, but I, for the people that didn't get a chance to see it, I want to play it again. So here's Pastor Muta. Scripture is replete with the call of God's people to listen to God and do what he says. In Genesis, God gives Adam stewardship of the garden and everlasting life as long as he remains obedient to his word. In Deuteronomy, Moses reminds the Israelites of the covenant blessings that God promised to those that obey the law of God. In Malachi, the prophet reminds us that if we are obedient to God's call to financial stewardship by returning a tithe, that means 10% of our income, he will multiply the 90% we are left with. Jesus himself reminds us that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. 
The most important thing we can do as believers and disciples of Jesus Christ is not only hear the voice of God, but respond to the voice of God. That's why we want to invite you to step into an opportunity to listen to God and do what he says by automating the important. Biblical financial stewardship is one of the greatest challenges most believers struggle with, but it's important to God. And this is what Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Automate the important is an opportunity for us to respond to God in faith by faith to his word over our finances. We want to listen to God and do what he says. It's this simple. If you consider yourself a part of Relevant Church, we invite you to set up an automated recurring gift online. Think about it. We automate our car payment because it's important. We automate our mortgage because that's important. We've even automated Netflix and Hulu and so many other things we consider to hold value in our lives. So how about we automate the most important thing, obedience to God's word. Yes, yes, be obedient to God's word. I just really enjoy the fact that, <laughs> yes, let's just keep clapping until we get the lights on. I just realized that. But I just love how Pastor Muta is just like, it's important. It's important to God. And there's also another way that you can begin to trust God. And that is through, with our 90 day tithe challenge. It's all about trusting God with the 10% of your income. Because scripture says, test me, test me. And I will open up the floodgates. But He's not asking, test me with 3%. He's not saying, test me with 8%, test me with 5%. No, he's saying 10. The number 10 has great significance. We see it all throughout the Bible. We see that number all throughout the Bible. It means completeness. God is asking for completeness so that you can get a completeness of a blessing. And, the, and so when you use the cards that house crew has with automating the important cards or signing up for recurring giving or the 90 day tithe challenge i want you to just say god i trust you in those moments if you sign up for recurring giving we have a book we want to give you it's called beyond blessed by robert morris and it is an amazing phenomenal book and the tagline I love it says God's perfect plan to overcome all financial stress because finances can be stressful trust me I'm sure you guys know that for yourself and then we also want to give the people who sign up for the 90 day tithe challenge we want to give them a new possible shirt because God is opening new possibilities in your life and so the third way guys the third way that I want to extend to you so that you can start trusting God is with your life. Trusting God means placing our faith in Him, knowing that He is sovereign and He has our best interests at heart. God's love for us is immeasurable. And he showed it by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Hallelujah. Trusting God involves surrendering your life to him. Trust that God has a purpose for your life. Trust that he will guide every step that you take. Seek his will. Trust his promises and experience the abundant life he has prepared for you. Just trust him today. Trust him with your life. If you want to say yes to Jesus, I encourage you to raise your hand on the count of three. One, God loves you. Two, God wants all of you. Three, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So for all those people that have their hands raised, put it over your heart and just everyone repeat after me. God, I love you.